Early morning in Kenya, in the wildlife conservation areas, they are quiet. This all changes when the phone rings. Traffickers are here. The team can be contacted at all times. We are the first mobile security patrol veterinary team in this part of Kenya. Typically, an animal is trapped in a poach snare, but it can be anything. A lion which needs to be translocated, or a sick zebra, but usually it's a snare issue. Our kits include gloves, first aid kit, medical supplies, blindfold, rope, and guarding rifle. The team consists of a driver, one head vet, and two rangers. Once we have assembled everything, we are ready to go and save the animal. The, the roads are not usually paved. Most of the time we drive through the bush. We are going to see where is this, where is this, where is this. reach the animal, we have to keep the animal safe and ourselves safe. It has become debilitated because of the snare, it's not eating. We only have a few minutes once the animal has been tranquilized and it can be very dramatic. Thank you. Complete. Back in the compound, we are a bigger team. Joseph, our animal keeper, takes care of the orphans. Our lab technician takes care of the blood work. A co owner manages our online presence. This job is important because there is a lot of conflict between human beings and wildlife. And therefore, intervention to save wildlife from becoming extinct is very crucial. I love so much to save lives and see animals are well. And that is our calling. That's why I do the job. I'm the best female weightlifter in Kenya. My goal is to be the best female weightlifter in Kenya. Natasha is my daughter and we are best of friends. My name is Marcio Biro, I do weightlifting. My name is Natasha Vandere Okoth and I also do weightlifting. My elder brother was a weightlifter and I used to accompany him to the gym, which was in 1999. There were no women weightlifters, so they were asking ladies to come and join and that's how I joined and never looked back. I started weightlifting when I was 11 years old. I used to go with my mom to the gym whenever she was training. At the gym, we do many exercises. We have squats, the deadlifts, bench presses, shoulder press. We do back extensions. When it comes to doing those conditioning exercises, I always laugh at her whenever I defeat her. <laughs> I've competed in uh, four Commonwealth Games four All-Africa Games, four African Championships, and in one Olympic Games. Natasha one day is going to be where I am. Natasha is a strong lady. I can say that. That's why I even thought that she, I should introduce her to the sport and motivate her and push her to be even better than me and become the top lifter in Kenya. What makes me proud of my mom is that she stands out from the rest and she's a strong woman. I wanted to be a weightlifter because my mother, she inspired me always and she told me from the first day that I can make it, I can do it. My name is Elvis Otieno. I live in Nairobi. 
that's in Kenya, and I'm a country musician. Way down in the state of Georgia. Just in the water Daddy wants to know If I make enough To kiss daughter Country music was my first love My parents, I think, looking back at it Were very unique in a way Because they loved country music They had all the records And I listened to all the beautiful music that was there That kind of like shaped up The person that I uh, was to become later in my life we identify quite a lot with country music because of the message that is in it. Family, love, heartbreak. From the coal mines of Kentucky to the California sun. I draw a lot of inspirations from different singers and different songwriters. Garth Brooks, Charlie Pride, Alan Jackson, Don Williams, George Strait, Brooks and Dunn. The list is endless. The struggles they experience are really universal. One more day, one more time. Every time I've gone on stage, I have to make sure my audience are with me and they get my message. And usually what I want them to feel is the raw emotions of a song. Sadly stoked with me. As I walk the streets of my memories I'm just like a vessel But through me, they can feel the emotions And it has to be real, it has to come from your heart Thank you, thank you so much In the heart of downtown Nairobi, there is a rink. That rink is home to an unnamed ice hockey team. Currently, we haven't found a name for the team, but we just call it the Kenya Hockey Team. My name is Bernard Azegere, currently the captain Kenya Ice Hockey League. I decided to play ice hockey simply because I wanted to do something different. Here in Kenya, many people, we grew up playing different sports like soccer, athletics. I just wanted to do something that stands out, something unique. We have around 30 members in our team. We compete against ourselves. So whoever shows up, we divide the equal number of players, then we play against ourselves. There's no money in ice hockey in Kenya. Unlike in Europe, where we have leagues whereby teams can buy players, pay them well, here in Kenya we're just beginning. In the next coming years, ice hockey will be a big sport. Currently, many people are joining and we're hoping to get even more as time goes. Our future dream is for our Kenyan team to be featured in the Winter Olympics. I know we don't stand a chance, but just being there, we might prove the world wrong. Once you achieve your dreams, there's a satisfaction that comes with it. It's just a good feeling. You're like, okay, we've made it, finally. Music is really, really, really powerful in itself and in, in what it can do for you outside of music. Korogocho is one of the largest slum neighborhoods in Nairobi, Kenya. But due to extreme poverty, there's limited access to youth arts programs. 
Since 2008, a community program called Ghetto Classics has been trying to change that. My name is Elizabeth Chiroge, and I'm the founder and director of the Ghetto Classics program. Ghetto Classics is a program um, that started off here in Korogosho. It's about using music to change the lives of young Kenyans, and in particular those from very difficult environments and, and backgrounds and lives. Korogosho is hard, but we hope that in our space we are creating a better a better Korogosho. We teach 600 kids a week. We have violins, one viola, the cellos. We have flute, clarinets, saxophones, tubas, trombones, trumpets. We only got French ones the other day, which is very exciting. We see that the discipline that comes with the kind of music that we teach, um, in this case classical music, um, is something very important for these kids because it's something they may lack at home. So they play together, make music together that gives them family. The lives of the kids are just so, so, so difficult. The challenges they face, the being crushed by life, having you know, no hope when everybody around you is just fighting to survive. So we hope that in our space we're creating a place where dreams can, can be nourished and can grow and, and be fulfilled.